Here are 10 things you need to do before heading to your cruise ship contract. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jordan, if you are new here, I am a professional figure skater and I work for Royal Caribbean. I am currently gearing up to head to my fourth cruise ship contract and this time I'm headed to the Wonder of the Seas. I am so looking forward to this contract. The ship looks absolutely gorgeous and it is going to be my second Oasis class ship I'm working on. So I'm really looking forward to that. The last time I was working on an Oasis class ship was actually my first contract, which was almost four years ago, and I worked on the Allure of the Seas. With every contract comes new challenges as you are preparing, but there are a few key things you wanna make sure to do before you head to any cruise ship contract, whether it be your first contract as a new hire or your 10th contract as a seasoned seafarer. So today I am going to share with you 10 things you should do before heading to your contract on any cruise ship. It doesn't have to be Royal Caribbean, this could be for any cruise line. I do post a ton of travel vlogs, cruise ship content, and showing you behind the scenes of what it's like to work on a cruise ship as a performer. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure to do that. And without further ado, let's jump on into the video. The first and most important step to any upcoming assignment is to read your contract. It sounds a little bit self-explanatory because obviously you are receiving a contract and you do have to sign it in order to sign on the ship. However, I do feel that sometimes people don't read the entire contract, they just read bits and pieces and don't verify that everything looks good before signing your name on that line. You wanna make sure that you are reading your contract in depth, word for word, all the way through from the first page to the very last to make sure that everything looks good and you know what to expect going into the contract. As a performer, I know what my contract looks like and I know what to expect as far as duties are concerned, hours worked, things of that matter. It does, of course, vary depending on what your job title is on board. So I don't have experience with contracts aside from my own, but it is very important to read all the fine print so you know what you are in for before embarking the ship. I can tell you with 100% honesty that even though this is my fourth contract and every contract is written the exact same way, I still read the contract from the first to the very last page all the way through every single time I have to sign a new contract. It's also a good way to check that everything looks good as far as how your name is spelled, your contract sign on and sign off date, the pay that you are going to receive, how you're going to be paid. There's just a bunch of information in there that you do really need to know. In my opinion, the second most crucial item to have and to check before signing on board is your passport. So no matter where in the world you live, you do need a passport to work on board. It doesn't matter if it is local. Because I am from the United States, a lot of cruise ships port out of Florida, which is still the US. However, we do travel to other countries, the Caribbean, maybe even Europe. So you wanna make sure that your passport is valid six months after your expected sign-off date. My passport is valid until 2028, so I still have quite a few years left to use it, but when that time comes, I will make sure to renew it with plenty of time in advance before an upcoming contract. You don't wanna get into a situation where you realize last minute your passport is going to expire in the middle of your contract or before you get there and then you lose out on an assignment because you are waiting for the passport renewal to come back. Another thing that goes very hand in hand with passports is visas. Depending on where you are from or where you are cruising, you may or may not need a visa or even a Siemens book. Because I am from the US, I have yet to need a visa for any of my contracts. I do know that if you are traveling and cruising around Asia, you do need a Siemens book and you might need a visa as well. But just make sure you check on that before heading there. Your scheduler should give you this information, but it is always good to be on top of it and check it yourself. Each cruise line and each itinerary has its own requirements. So make sure you're checking on the visa requirements if there are any and get that sorted with plenty of time before sign on. Another huge part of working on board a cruise ship is making sure you have the specific medical certificate you need. That certificate will come from an approved facility. So depending on where in the world you live, 
you will need to go to an approved facility and have a bunch of different tests done. Off the top of my head, some of the tests include an eye exam, a hearing exam, a colorblind test, you need blood drawn, you have to have a urinalysis and urine dip, there is a drug screening, and then there are a few other tests that they need to do. If you are currently working on board or you are about to start your first contract, make sure to give yourself plenty of time to make this appointment because wait times can vary. All in all, the process could take up to a month um, because you usually can't get into the facility right away. You have to make your appointment with plenty of notice in advance. Before you can even get that appointment, you need to submit paperwork so that you can get pre-approved. So as a new hire or someone who is renewing their medical, you have to fill out specific paperwork, submit it, then once they have received that and you've paid for a down payment, then you can book your appointment. And then once you get all of these medical exams taken care of, it should take about a week to process to get your medical certificate. This is my personal experience with it. I do live in the US and I live in New York State, so I have to drive about an hour and a half to get my medical done. There might be one right around the corner from you depending on where in the world you live and it might not take as long but for me that is pretty much the standard going into this contract i had the worst experience with my medical they didn't do half the tests they needed to they lost some of the labs and i was kind of left in the dust for two and a half weeks so it was a bit stressful i had to follow up a bunch of times luckily i got it sorted so we are good to go but that is why it is so important to make sure you give yourself plenty of time in advance to get this taken care of before you come on board because you cannot sign on any cruise ship without this medical certificate. Another extremely crucial step to preparing for a contract is sorting out paperwork. So you want to make sure that you have your contract good to go, your letter of employment, which is your LOE, your insurance letter, and of course your medical certificate that shows you are fit for duty. You want to make sure you have all of these ready to go and I do recommend printing them out and bringing them in a folder in your carry-on bag if you are flying because you want to have access to them at all times and you want to have an extra copy. So even though you might have it electronically on your phone or your computer, it is very important to print it out and have a physical copy of it. I am a little bit crazy and I go over the top a bit, so I usually print about two or three copies of each thing just to make sure that we're good. Whatever ship you are signing on, you will have to provide this paperwork. Maybe not all of it, but some of it you will have to give. So it's better to be over prepared than underprepared. The next step for preparing for any contract is to make sure that you have all your proper medications and toiletries you may need for the contract. It is currently 2023 and the COVID rules have gotten a lot better so you are granted shore leave but in previous contracts I wasn't able to get off of the ship so I had to make sure that I had enough product to last me the entire contract. Every ship should offer a mailing address that you can order and send packages to so that really isn't a huge deal but it is always better to show up with that stuff so you don't have to worry about it later. When it comes to medications you won't be able to just run to a pharmacy in whatever port you're in so it's better to get it all taken care of and have the amount or the dosage that you need for the time you're away before you head there. Toiletries aren't as necessary, so if you have a specific product you want to have, chances are they won't be selling it on board. So I would recommend buying a few products before going. If you don't really care what you're using and it's more generic, then they do have a slap chest on board. As you are getting closer to your sign-on date, you should receive your flight information with plenty of time in advance. It could be anywhere from a week before to two weeks before. Sometimes they even send it a month in advance, but I think I received mine two weeks before my expected sign-on date. So make sure you check your flight information. Definitely print a copy of it or write it down somewhere so you know exactly what airport you are flying out of and what time and of course what airlines you are flying. That way if you have to travel a bit to the airport you can schedule accommodations or sort that out instead of scrambling last minute. I'm such a type A personality that I love to know way in advance and have everything organized so if you're like me it's better to just do it in advance rather than wait till 
two days before. Going along with that, it is important to check your bag allowance for the flight. Typically for Royal, we are given two checked bags included with our flight. So that is plenty to pack everything we need for a contract, depending on how long you're away. You should not have to pay for bags, but if for some reason it's not included in the flight, you are usually reimbursed up to $70 for your luggage, or maybe it's 80. 70 or 80, but make sure you check on that before so you know exactly how to pack going into it. Another thing to consider before packing and heading to a contract is checking the itinerary of the ship you will be signing on. It makes it a lot easier when it comes to packing if you know the climate that you are gonna be in. It can be a challenge if you are doing a crossing and you're starting in the Caribbean and then you are going to a colder climate, but it will help you a lot to pack accordingly so you don't show up with the wrong clothes. The easiest way to check is just head to the website of whichever cruise line you're working for and check the ship's itinerary for that amount of time or that year. You can also look on Cruise Mapper. That is usually what I do. So I just type in the name of the ship and Cruise Mapper scroll down to itinerary and it'll show you week to week where you will be going. Before hopping on any flight to head to your contract, you need to check what the COVID requirements are. So you definitely wanna check if you are required to take a PCR exam or a rapid test. Most airlines nowadays have dropped the testing requirements and I know a lot of cruise ships as well for sign-on don't require you to get a COVID test, but you never know and you just wanna make sure that you are all set because you wouldn't wanna show up for the flight and not be able to board it because you don't have that test done. So definitely make sure to check that anywhere from two weeks to a week before you leave. That way if you need a PCR you can get that done 72 hours before your flight. The last thing that you definitely want to do before heading to any cruise ship contract is checking your flight details. I know I said flight details but I really meant hotel details. Typically you will fly the day before you sign on. It is rather uncommon to fly and sign on the same day you land. So if you are staying in a hotel the night before you sign on, make sure you check the hotel information. Your supervisor or maybe your scheduler should provide this for you. In my case, my ice captain always sends me the information um, a couple days before so we know what's going on. The company does usually offer instructions on where to get the shuttle from the airport to the hotel and what the name of the hotel is. So make sure you have a copy of this. So once you have reached your destination and landed, you know exactly where to go and what hotel you will be staying in for the night. There you have it, 10 things you definitely need to do before heading to your cruise ship contract. I hope this was informative and helpful to any of you. Maybe there are some of you who are looking to work on board or you are gearing up for your first contract. Or maybe you have worked on board before but you struggle with organization. Hopefully this helped you a little bit. I am just curious so if you do work on a cruise ship please comment below and let me know what cruise line you work for because I'm just interested to hear. But yeah that is all the things I definitely recommend you should do before you head to a contract. Of course there's many other little things that you might want to do so my best advice is to write everything down you want to get done before going so you have a checklist to reference back to as the days go on and your contract approaches. But like I said, I am headed to Wonder of the Seas. I'm actually flying tomorrow. So make sure you stay tuned for all of the cruise ship content. If you're not already following me on my social media, make sure to do so. I am posting daily on Instagram and TikTok. So a lot of fun content to come. I hope you guys are excited for the journey. I am so looking forward to this contract and just can't wait for a new experience. So thank you so much for watching. I love you all to the moon and back, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.